ברוך אתה ה' אלוהינו מלך העולם שהכל נהיה בדברו. The Bible speaks of two covenants, two deals, two agreements that God made with the Jewish people. When does our history begin? Does it begin with the patriarchs, with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob? Or does it really begin at Mount Sinai, when the entire people hears the voice of God, I'm the Lord your God who took you out of Egypt. According to our rabbis, there were, the Torah says so, there were 600,000 men over 20 years of age. And if you count their wives and children, three million people, millions of people heard the voice of God. So when does our history really begin? Does it begin with the patriarchs or does it begin with the happenings, the event, the historic event at Mount Sinai? And then again, why do you need two covenants? Isn't one enough? Well, this is the way God wanted it and you can't question really God's will, but let us try to understand why was there a need for these two covenants. The second covenant obviously speaks of definitive things that you have to do. You have to honor your father and your mother. Don't steal. Don't lie. If you see somebody in dire need, help him. If you build a house, make sure that there is some kind of protection so people shouldn't fall off the roof of your house. Don't do any damage to anybody. Try to live a very moral life. Th these are the instructions that you get at Mount Sinai. On the other hand, when it comes to the covenant with our forefathers, with the patriarchs, actually I think there are basic two laws. One has to do with circumcision and one has to do with a certain part of the animal that you cannot eat. These laws are repeated afterwards in the laws that were enunciated in Mount Sinai. So therefore we go back again. Why do you need two covenants? Well, maybe the difference is the following. The first covenant is not about individual laws. It is actually about role models. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob have to be our role models in life. You have to study their history, their biography. What did they do? Did they protect their families? Were they honest? Did they lie? Were they charitable? When strangers came, did they offer them food? What kind of life did they lead? Because many a time we learn much more from the behavior of a human being. How does the child learn? Does he learn because his father says, do your homework? Or does he learn more from the way his father speaks to his mother? The way his father speaks to his own brothers? The way he relates to people that work with him? When he walks out in this, into the street, the way he greets people from their personal behavior? Many a time you learn much more than from in specific instructions that somebody gives you. In our daily prayers we say, Blessed art thou, O God, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. Because what we have to do is to emulate. We have to imitate the lives of the patriarchs. Behave like they behaved. Because all the laws, while they are very important, each one and every one of them, the, one of their purposes is also to try to make you into an Abraham, try to make you into an Isaac, try to make you into a role model. So remember, it is not sufficient just to fulfill the letter of the law. You have to make sure that the letter of the law is also transformative. It makes you into a different being each time, a little closer to the patriarchs with all their different characteristics. They lived in very difficult times because they were trailblazers. Everybody around them behaved in a different manner and they stuck to a certain high moral principle. So you have to make sure also, regardless of the environment in which you find yourself, you have to remember that Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob also led a life notwithstanding what surrounded them. If you will do that, you will surely become a better human being, a better Jew, a better spouse, a better son, a better student, you will be much happier with yourself.